I'm sure you have heard the name of the most popular movie these days. Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan's new film starring Killian Murphy. As you know, the subject of this film is the explosion of the atomic bomb. And that's why our group decided to produce a short tutorial on explosions. Well, you probably know that an atomic bomb explosion is mushroom shaped. Its shape consists of a lower part, a linear part, and a larger part on top. You can see the resources related to this topic on the screen. Therefore, the shape of the explosion is very important for us in this tutorial. Hello, welcome to MIMVIZ. Well, I already prepared this simulation and I said it's better to take a look at it before starting the training. We used 3D Max and Phoenix FD software to simulate the explosion. As you can see, I have simulated this in 40 frames. This is the exploded view and it consists of the same parts that I showed you. So let's go to 3D Max and start a new scene so we can start the tutorial. Well, since the shape of this explosion is important to us, we must have an explosive source to create our desired form, or at least close to this form. So before we start, we need an explosive source. Go to the Create tab and select a cone. The closest form we can get the best result from. I want to consider the dimensions for it. Radius with the number 5. I mirror it in the Z axis and move it up 10 centimeters. This is the source of our explosion. In Phoenix FD, each of the object's polygons is the axis for the blast direction. These polygons direct the explosion upwards, and these polygons direct the explosion downwards. Let's go to Phoenix FD. After installing this plugin, a new toolbar will be created, which has many tools, but we don't need most of them. In this lesson, we only talk about explosions. This section is the most useful for us. We use this section to start, pause, restore and delete the simulation. Here are some presets that we can use without getting involved in complicated settings. To start, we select the source of the explosion and select the explosion simulation preset to create a box for us. This box determines the explosion range for us and a phoenix source. If source was not created, we can create it from this part. Let's go to the explanation of this part. In the first part, the source of the explosion can be identified. And from the outgoing section, the output speed of the explosion can be controlled. As you can see, the output speed of the explosion in frames 0 to 4 is a very large number. And from frame 5, this number has decreased. This animation is created automatically and does not need to be changed. We don't need Phoenix Source anymore. Let's go to Phoenix FD Fire. There are many options here, but we will only talk about the important ones. The most important part is the grid. 
where we can specify the resolution and dimensions of our box. For example, I chose the size 300, 300, 150. It is a large amount. 250, 250, 150 size is more suitable. The voxel size section also specifies the resolution. The smaller, the more accurate. It can be changed by entering the number. It can also be controlled with these two options to decrease and increase. For the final simulation, it is better to use 0.1 to 0.3, and it is suitable for testing number one. For this simulation, the adaptive grid must be set to smoke. This tab has nothing else to do and is enough. In the preview tab, you can specify the display of different simulation parts, such as velocity in the viewport. From the particle preview section, we make sure that the explosion display is active in the viewport. I'm going to reduce the number of frames to 30 frames to start the simulation. As you can see, we were able to easily get the explosion in the shape we wanted. Therefore, the shape of the explosion source is very important. The detail reduction number can determine the quality of the explosion display in the viewport. Because the resolution in the grid tab is low, the display quality is slightly reduced. We will fix it later in the final output. Let's go to the next part. From the output section, we can specify the path of our frames, which are now stored in the document. You can change its location to make it easier to access Well, we don't need to see our source in the explosion. All we have to do is go to Object Properties, turn off Renderable, and click Display as Box to see it as a box in the viewport. Now, we will only see the explosion. The overall speed of the explosion can be made slower or faster. It can be controlled with this parameter from the dynamic part and the time scale part. Well, let's try it. I give the number 0.5. Let's go to the simulation section and start. As you can see, the speed decreased slightly. To show the explosion on a large scale, we enter the velocity section. The large scale section specifies the scale of the explosion, which should be set to 1. We also set the smoke surface number to 0 0.4. From the randomized section, we can create some variety in different parts of the explosion. The larger the number, the greater the variety. Let me see.
it is going out of the intended mode. We don't need a lot of variety here. We use a small number to keep the form. Fluidity mode should be on PCG with numbers 40, 50. In transport, we can specify the number of steps for simulation for each frame. In this way, the simulation accuracy increases. Number two is suitable. From the rendering tab, we can specify the smoke concentration in the volumetric options section. we can increase or decrease the opacity. It depends on you. I think 0.6 is a good number for this. Let's go to the grid section and increase the simulation resolution. you can see that 20 frames of simulation were done. The size and shape of the explosion source, resolution, and grid dimensions are the most important factors in achieving the best output. Be sure to work with these parameters and get the right output by taking many tests. If the viewport becomes heavy and you cannot work in the scene, Increase the detail reduction number. I'll go back to the original file to explain further. I used a plain Vray light for lighting. Also from a Vray plane for the stage floor a camera with a telephoto lens for which the number 200 is intended. In the picture, we can see how it looks. An explosion has occurred. Lower, middle, and upper sections. It takes 10 minutes to render one frame. You can use GPU for faster rendering and have an animation. Thank you very much for being with us. Don't forget to like and comment. Bye until the next tutorial.